and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in the heart of Europe. I hope everybody's weekend is going great so far. This class, we are focusing on an IELTS task to essay that we planned yesterday. We started the introduction, and today we will review that and then finish body paragraph one, two, and the conclusion. Hi, Li Ying. Good to see you in class. This is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. In about 90 minutes, we will have a class where everybody can chat, and that will focus on speaking part three. The materials do come from our websites, aehelp.com, for the academic version of the exam and check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com for the general. Just putting the URL up there so you can check those out at any time. Hi, Shang Hung. Hi, Amon. I'll quickly show you those websites while we wait for some more members to join in on this class. Now, this is the academic website here. You click that big red button to join. Then you will have a My Student account. And that My Student account is full of lots and lots of goodies. It starts with a tour to walk you through. And then you'll see that there are uh, computer based exams, online academic course with strategies, there's a curriculum book, workbook, study plan. Uh, there's lesson videos over 100 hours. There's seven CDs with over 60 tracks to help you master the IELTS. And we even have additional services members. This is something to take note of. We have editing, CV, and statement of purpose assistance on that website as well. Good morning, Aman. Uh, I'm guessing it's morning where you're at. It's afternoon for me. Um, this is the uh, general version of the website for general IELTS students. Same idea with different reading and writing sections. Click that big red button to join us there. Now, a little bit back to our lesson here. Um, you can download our app, Academic IELTS Help. And if you have questions, you can send me an email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. So again, we're looking at task two in this class, and then the next class will be speaking part three a little bit later today. Okay, uh, let's review the question. Uh, and uh, members, I asked you, those of you who were in yesterday's class, to produce the introductory paragraph uh, for this question. So here is the question again, IELTS writing task two. Some companies sponsor sports as a way to advertise themselves. While some people think this is good, others believe there are disadvantages to this. Discuss both views and give your own opinion. Include any relevant examples and explanations from your own experience, right? So that means we can use examples from our own personal experience. Sometimes students ask, my teacher said it's, you can't use personal examples in task two. There's no rule like that for the IELTS. If the question says use examples, explanations from your own experience, then by all means. Okay, hi Preeti, hi Roshni, hi Zainab. Okay, so we paraphrased the question to make sure we understand it. We gathered some valuable ideas and vocabulary, we identified the topic, we identified the controlling idea, and then we went through the very important steps of asking what, why, how about the topic. So the topic is sports endorsement by companies. And we asked what, why, how, and then we focused on the two very important questions of why is it positive for businesses to sponsor sports? Let's review that because that will be important for the body paragraphs. So in order to grow their products, it encourages competition 
and athletics among society because there's a great monetary reward. So that means that a lot of people work hard to become good in sports because they know there's money in sports. There's companies that sponsor sports. So it incentivizes sport. It means it gives encouragement to sport. Provides opportunities to athletes in difficult or impoverished situations. So um, people who might not have a lot of money but are very good in sports can get sponsorship and that's encouraging. And we even visualize these examples like Ronaldo wearing Adidas or a poor school uh, football team getting new shoes and jerseys for their basketball team. Okay. Then we talked about why is it negative to, for businesses to sponsor sports. Uh, companies start to control the athletes. So the sportsmen, the sto sportswomen uh, get uh, encouraged more by money than their passion for the sport. They're worried about their sponsorship. Also, it's expensive for, uh, for companies to advertise through sport. And uh, for the viewers, for the audience, it's distracting. Okay, so those are the ideas that we came up with. And then we wrote down our thesis statement. Students, I still see too many essays for task two that do not have strong thesis statements. It's really important that you have a good, strong thesis statement to get a high band score on the task two of the writing in the exam. Without a strong thesis, even if you have pretty good English, it's almost for sure that you're not going to get the best score. Okay, the thesis statement is the spine, it's the backbone of your essay. Okay, um, just like with a human or an animal, if the backbone is weak, the animal is not able to function. Okay, if your essay has a weak indirect thesis, like this essay will talk about the advantages and disadvantages of uh, sports advertising, that's a weak thesis. That means your whole essay will be weak, even if you write fairly well. Okay. So you need a strong spine. You need a strong backbone and that's your thesis. All right. Although some individuals believe there are negatives to companies endorsing sports because it is distracting and manipulating. I agree with those who see this as mostly a benefit since such sponsorship provides incentives and opportunities. So here the reader knows that body paragraph one is going to be the negative. It's distracting and manipulating. We always write the first body paragraph about the side we do not agree with. Why? So members, why should you always write the first body paragraph as the one that you do not agree with. Why is that a good idea to structure your essay that way? Hi, Viet. Hi, Ferdovs. Hi, Zainab. Good to see more members in the class. So why is it a good strategy to start with the side you don't agree with? That could be the positive side too. Just start with the side that you disagree with or that you find less agreeable and then write about the side that you agree with in the next body paragraph or in your final paragraphs. So why is that a good strategy? So why should you do that? What is the logic in structuring the essay this way? And certainly for this kind of a question that will also help you to get a higher band score. So what's that? What's the logic there? Uh, Shang Hung says people want to end up on the positive thoughts. Um, yes, Shang Hung, it's kind of correct. I think you're starting to think in the right way. Li Ying says, well, for the counter argument, absolutely Li Ying. So um, for the information to flow, it's better to write about the side you disagree with so you can set up for the counter argument, the side that you agree with, so it will have better cohesion 
better coherence, and in rhetoric, so the art of rhetoric, I'm not going to talk too much about that right now, but the art of rhetoric, strongly discussed and explored by the ancient Greeks, is the art of argument. So it's the art of arguing your ideas. And in the art of rhetoric, you always want to finish with the side that you support so that your listener or your audience keeps that thought or stays with that idea, okay? You don't want them to stay with the idea that you disagree with because then your audience might say, oh, I remember what the guy disagrees with, but I don't really remember what they agree with. That doesn't really help your argument. If you're a politician, a lawyer, a doctor, a professional, a businessman, so you always want to end with the side that you agree with. Okay, in the art of rhetoric, it's very important. And this is a persuasive essay. It's an argumentative essay. So we know that body paragraph two, according to my thesis, is the side that I support. It's the positive side about incentives and opportunities. Now, I gave you the homework to write an introductory paragraph with a hook, background, and thesis. Now, I did that. So before I show you mine, you show me yours. Um, students, uh, did any of you uh, write the hook for this? Hi, Ferdovs. Good to see you in class. So what is a good hook for this introductory paragraph? And for everybody who's watching, yes, if you want to get a band 6.57 or higher, the hook is is important in the IELTS task two, okay? Li Ying says, athlete endorsements are considered as one of the most effective ways to promote awareness of the sport and reputation of the sponsor on a large scale. Woo, Li Ying, that is a long hook. It works, okay? It's a good hook, Li Ying. Just be really careful not to make mistakes. You have one small mistake. Um, it's the first the, okay? Considered as the one of the. Uh, you have an extra article in there. You don't need that the in there, okay? But it's just a small mistake, so it's still okay. Just be careful with long hooks, okay? It's usually a better idea to keep your hook short, clean, Accurate. But Li Ying, it's good because you have your topic, athlete endorsements. You're kind of missing the concept of business, but we get it, okay? Um, and uh, you have a very good fact that you're presenting to your reader. So it catches the attention of the reader. It introduces the topic. For Dobbs, uh, Viet, Zainab, I know a few of you were in yesterday's class. Anybody else? I think, Li Ying, you weren't in yesterday's class, so I'm wondering maybe you caught up from the video later on. Uh, Viet says, sports makes people healthier, cooperative, increases competitiveness, but it has become a big industry with lots of investments coming from corporations and businesses. Okay, Viet, um, half of your hook is okay. Okay, again, students, start with simple sentences in the hooks. Uh, Viet, the first part of your hook, so sports makes us more, or not more healthy, but it's healthier. So sports makes us healthier, cooperative, and competitive. That is off topic. We're not talking about the value of sports, Viet. And if I read your essay, first of all, the beginning is incorrect because it's healthier uh, cooperative and competitive. That's parallel grammar, right? The grammar form has to be parallel. Healthier, competitive, cooperative. Um, so that's a mistake, but even worse is that it's not really on topic. It's talking about the value of sports and not about sports advertising. The second half of your hook, Viet, is accurate, and that's all you need. So... All you need, Viet, is like this. Watch. Sports have become a big industry with a lot of investment coming from corporations. That's it. You don't need businesses because 
corporations are businesses. And that would be a very good hook, Viet. Okay, so one more time, sports have become a big industry with lots of investment coming from corporations. That's a band nine level hook. Okay, yeah, Li Ying, I thought so. Good for you for watching. Okay, um, Sheng Hung says, sports games are popular in the world and many companies sponsor athletes with advertisement. Sheng Hung, that is an accurate hook for this essay. Very good. Sports and advertising are more related than ever, says for Dobbs. For Dobbs, that's a beautiful hook as well. Simple, clean, one, two, three, four, five, eight words for Dobbs. It's an eight word hook that you wrote and it's brilliant. It's clean, it's to the point, and it's enticing. It makes me want to read what you have to write. Okay, very good. Aman says, undoubtedly sports advertisement plays a crucial role in everyone's life. Um, yes, Aman, that works. Absolutely. I like how you did that because it plays a role in the life of athletes, businesses, and the viewers. So I get it. And it's interesting, Aman. It's very good. Okay. Preeti says, the endorsement is a good way of promotion for sports companies. Uh, Preeti, it's grammatically a little bit incorrect. Let me uh, rearrange that. So sports endorsements are a good way uh, to promote companies. That would be the right way, Preeti. Okay. Very good, students. So good job. Let's move along. I definitely want to get to the body paragraphs and the conclusion. So here is my hook. Each year, companies spend billions of dollars on endorsing sports and athletes. Okay. Again, like with some of you, it's quite simple. It's quantitative. Quantitative hooks are quite good. So if you can put a number in like billions of dollars, it's powerful, right? Because people pay attention to money, especially when the word billions comes into play. No pun intended. So each year, companies spend billions of dollars on endorsing sports and athletes. Catches the reader's attention. Whoa, okay. What are you going to say next? And then comes the background. Now, I'm sure some of you wrote the background, which is great. You can send your essays to me later. We're not going to dwell on the background right now. Um... We'll get on with the body paragraphs. So again, remember members that the background, it defines the topic of your essay. So it tells your reader, what are you talking about? What are you writing about? And it tells the reader the importance of your essay. So why is it important? Why do we need to consider this? So businesses promote their products and brands by paying money and providing equipment to thousands of athletic clubs and sportsmen, women globally in hopes of increasing profits. That sentence is clearly my definition. Okay, so this sentence is defining for the reader what I'm talking about. And it's not a miracle, it's not magic. I'm simply going back to my what, why, how in the planning and using that. So what is sports advertising? Paying money for sports clubs and athletes to promote products, names, and brands. So all I'm doing is I'm using my planning. When you plan your essay, use your planning, okay? Uh, your what on the topic is usually the background definition as here, okay? Now, the importance, and often you can just very clearly use the word important, okay? So it is important to assess the overall impact this has on the sporting community. Sure. So I just tell my reader, hey, look, let's talk about this. Uh, as, um, who was it, Preeti or, uh, no, it's Aman. Um, Aman said, sports advertising plays a crucial role in everyone's life. So, Aman, that would be a good one for this part of the introduction as well, for the importance. Okay, why do we talk about this? And then, of course, comes the thesis, which tells the reader 
the outline of my essay, my position, and my voice. Although some individuals believe there are negatives to companies endorsing sports because it is distracting and manipulating, I agree with those who see this as mostly a benefit since such sponsorships provide incentives and opportunities. Okay, so that is my introduction. Now, let's move on to body paragraph one. What is body paragraph one? How does it start? So members, what is the first sentence of body paragraph one? So Shang Hung says it's the topic sentence. Yeah, it's basically a mini what. It's kind of like, what is this paragraph about? <laughs> okay. So instead of what is the essay about, here we ask, what is the paragraph about? So it is the topic sentence. It's what the paragraph is about. Another way to think about it is a deeper definition of point one. Okay, so um, write some topic sentences for me, members. A uh, topic here is about sports being distracting and manipulating. Okay, so give me a topic sentence uh, that works uh, for this body paragraph in connection to the negatives of sports advertising being distracting and manipulating. Now, you don't have to use these words. Explain it in your own words or introduce this in your own words. I'm going to do the same while you're thinking about your sentences. Okay, here's my topic sentence. Again, don't overthink it, so keep your writing within the abilities of your English. Use words that you're confident with, that you know you understand clearly, okay? Uh, the IELTS exam is not the place to experiment with new words, all right? Only use vocabulary and grammar that you're confident using in your essay. It's better to write clear, simple sentences than unclear, complex sentences. You can still get a 6.5, maybe even a 7, if you have clear, simple writing. But if you have unclear, complex writing, you won't get a score above 5.5, 5, maybe even lower, 5, okay? Coherence is the most important part of your writing and speaking, okay? Aman Jum says, to begin with, there are a myriad of reasons behind my opinion. Aman, that topic sentence doesn't tell me anything, okay? Uh, students, uh, you have 40 minutes for task two and you have a minimum of 250 words. That's not enough time to waste on sentences and words that have no value for the reader, in this case your examiner, because you just don't get scores. So Aman, even though you use the word myriad 
um, and it's a clear sentence, it simply has no value for the essay. Okay? I know that you have reasons for your opinion. Uh, I don't want you to tell me that you have reasons for your opinion. I want you to tell me what your reasons actually are. Okay? It's much, much more important. No worries, Amar. We're just in body paragraph one for the essay. You remember from yesterday? Uh, Roshni says, regarding those who see sponsorship as disadvantageous, um, argue several reasons. One claim is that advertising changes the perspective of people, especially uh, in their clothing trend. Uh, Roshni, in, okay, so for your first sentence, include what those people actually say. So those who see sponsorship as disadvantageous um, for reasons. What are those reasons? So say, right? We said distracting and manipulative, so explain that or express that clearly. Uh, your second sentence, Roshni, about um, the claim that advertising changes perspective and close isn't clearly a negative. It doesn't actually tell me that the reader that that's necessarily bad. So so what? People wear a Nike swoosh on their shirt. It's not necessarily bad. Okay, so you'd be more clear in your explanation. Li Ying writes, many people argue that genuine um, sportsmanship is easily distorted by sponsors manipulation for their own benefit okay Li Ying that's good so your idea is very clear the spirit of sports yeah that's okay um, spirit of sports is actually one word uh, in most cases Li Ying it's sportsmanship so sportsmanship is the ethics the morale the spirit of sports okay so to be even more accurate, Li Ying, and to get some extra marks for lexical resource, you can write, many people argue that genuine sportsmanship is easily distorted by sponsors' manipulation for their own benefit. You don't need the comma, Li Ying, after manipulation, and it's a nice use of the apostrophe after the S for sport, sponsors' manipulation. You're showing me that it's plural, multiple sponsors. That's good, okay? Uh, Ferdov says, these days it is popular to make money through advertising um, of athletes, of course. Businesses want to control sportsmen and women. Uh, Ferdov, okay, it's a little bit wordy. The end of that sentence is good. The beginning is repetitive with the introduction. So the first three lines of your um, topic sentence, Ferdov, it just kind of repeats the introduction and you want to avoid that. Okay. You don't want to repeat information. So these days it is popular to make money through advertising. We said that in the introduction, okay, in the background. So start with uh, businesses want to control sportsmen and sportswomen for their own benefit, driving profits. That would be a more impactful and unique uh, topic sentence for Dobbs. All right, Preeti says, certain people believe that most sports advertising divert and irritate the viewer for their own financial purpose. Preeti, very nice logic. A couple of corrections, but that was very nice logic, very nice topic sentence. Um, all right, students, uh, let's keep moving along here. So if I didn't get to yours, don't worry. Uh, Viet, uh, Sheng Hung, I'll catch you on the next one. Okay, uh, what comes after the uh, topic sentence? I like to indent. I'm traditional, so I do like to indent my paragraphs like that. I think it looks nice, but these days you don't have to. Full justified is okay as well. Again, I'm a little bit traditional that way. Um, what comes uh, next? It is the explanation. That's right, Chang Hung. So what is the explanation? Okay, like, it's nice to say explanation, and at least saying explanation is a lot more clear than saying supporting point one, supporting point two. A lot of classes and teachers will say supporting point one, supporting point two. 
there's logic to that, but I like to be a little bit clear. Um, I like to say explanation. When you get more advanced in writing, you might actually do an example before the explanation. But for now, to get those high band scores, I always recommend topic sentence followed by explanation. And what is that? So what is the explanation? How should you think about it? Can you tell me that? So what's a good way to define the word explanation for your body paragraph? It's not an example, Li Ying. Example is again different. An, an explanation and an example are not the same. An example uh, comes after the explanation. So Preeti says it describes the topic sentence. Uh, you're on the right path, Preeti. How does it describe the topic sentence? So how does the explanation describe the topic sentence? By doing what? Come Lash, welcome to our membership. I'm happy you joined. Make sure to send me an email with your membership level. Um, uh, so Aman says by results or describing in detail with uh, qualitative sentences. I think Roshni, what you were thinking of is not qualitative. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're maybe thinking of quantitative, right? So not just qualitative, but quantitative. So describes the topic sentences through logic. and quantitative language. Yeah, so basically through logic and numbers, right? So through logic and numbers. Yeah, Roshni says, yeah, I meant quantitative. I know, Roshni, those are two easy words to confuse. Qualitative, quantitative. There's just a couple letters that are different, but the meaning is exactly the opposite, so you have to be really careful. Um, so... So think logic, so appeal to the logic of the, um, of the listener or of the audience. Remember I talked about those ancient Greeks and their art of rhetoric or argument? They call this logos, which is Greek for logic. So it is the logic of the argument, appeal to the logic of your uh, audience. So uh, logic, of course, is often best proved with numbers, right? So think about the sentence, individuals who are against the idea of business endorsing sports, um, businesses endorsing sports may argue that such advertising is not only annoying for fans, but also damaging for athletes. Okay, so now explain that with um, a logical, quantitative approach. Okay, so explain that. Uh, students, Amar, and a couple of students who I missed the um, hook or the topic sentence, don't worry, uh, when this class will be over over the weekend, you can write the whole essay and send it to me and I'll give you a bit of feedback, okay? So, but I'll try to catch different comments throughout. So again, now focus on explaining this sentence using logic and using quantitative language, okay? I'll do the same, so let's, Let's do it at the same time and then we'll compare, all right? Okay.
Okay, so something like that. All right. Um, Shang Hung says, when people are watching an exciting sport games, the advertisements pop up frequently that disturb viewers. Uh, Shang Hung, good, okay. Just one little tweak to make that an even better sentence and get the higher band score is quantify it. So how often, Shang Hung, do those advertisements pop up? Okay, um, state it. It doesn't have to be accurate, but you can say every two minutes. Okay, so watch, Shang Hung. Uh, when people are watching exciting sports games, the advertisements that pop up every two minutes disturb viewers. Boom, it's very good. Okay, that works. Every two minutes is clearer for your reader than saying frequently. When you say frequently, that's qualitative language. Um, your viewer doesn't know if you mean every 30 minutes, every five minutes. But if you say every two minutes, it's like, ouch, really? Every two minutes? There's advertisement that goes boop on the screen. Um, so numbers, numbers are your friend in communication, okay? Both in the writing and in the speaking. Uh, Sheng Hung continues, says, and athletes get sponsored for the benefits of millions of dollars by those ads and fall heavily under their influence. Okay, Sheng Hung, that second one needs a fair bit of correction, so rethink it, rewrite it. Viet says, for most people uh, who enjoy watching sports, they often have to see ads in the fields or commercials on TV at two minute intervals, and this leads to distraction and irritation. Okay, Viet, yeah, absolutely, good. Again, numbers, so same thing, Viet, as for Shang Hung. Get that number in there, okay? So get to that detail. Don't just say frequently or often, but actually tell me how frequently. Okay, Viet, that one is going more for the example. So you're saying, according to a study, nearly 80% of people complain about the irrelevant ads they see while watching sports. So that's closer to the example. It's good quantitative language, um, but you don't need it, okay? Uh, or maybe use that instead of the first uh, explanation, Viet, and then don't forget to explain manipulating athletes. If you talk about manipulating athletes, you need to explain manipulating athletes and you don't want to run out of time, okay? So careful not to over explain one idea and run out of time explaining the other ideas that you mentioned. You should never leave ideas in an essay unexplained or unsupported. That's bad writing, okay? So careful about that. All right, um, so this is what I wrote. Uh, many people who watch sports on TV state that dozens of projected banners and logos around football fields are visually distracting from the game. So let me correct that. Okay. Are visually distracting from the game. Sounds better or reads better. Others also comment that athletes who are paid millions of dollars by advertisers are no longer playing for the fun of the game, but simply for greed of monetary gain, okay? And here, it's maybe a little bit worried, wordy, sorry. Um, and I can just say, but simply for greed or out of greed. to make more money. That reads a little bit better. Okay, Preeti says, nowadays many players are making thousands of dollars through sports advertising, and after getting money, they do not value the game. Okay, uh, Preeti, that's pretty good. A couple of small corrections. Avoid contractions, especially for academic task two essays. So instead of don't, you need to write do not. It's uh, a rule in English that for academic and business writing, we avoid contractions. So instead of I'm, it's I am, okay? 
And uh, just one word choice correction, Preeti, is lose value for the game. So, Preeti, I would write your sentence like this. Nowadays, comma, many players make thousands of dollars through sports advertising, comma, and after getting this money, comma, they lose value for the game. Okay, so you have a few missing commas there, comma rules, remember, joining sentence with sentence, and also if you have a dependent clause followed by an independent clause, you need commas, so careful with those pre -t. okay? Uh, for Dobbs says, controlling the sports through business not only loses uh, competition between athletes, but also is visually distracting for viewers. Uh, for Dobbs, that's a topic sentence. That's not an explanation. Okay, that, that to me reads as a topic sentence. All right. Zainab says, the time when people watch a match in a live stream on YouTube, the advertisement, uh, the frequent advertisement um, breaks their attention and excitement. Okay, Zainab, not bad. Uh, but again, same thing as I said to other students, quantify it. Okay, quantify it. Uh, Li Ying, it seems a little bit off topic. Maybe reconsider that one. All right, students. And then comes the example. Okay. Now, in this task two, I chose to write first person because the question asked me to include examples and explanations from my experience, from your own experience. So I chose to write this as a first person essay, which means I'm using the uh, pronouns I, me, my, okay? And I show that to my reader in the thesis. I agree with those who see this as mostly a benefit. So that means that in my example, I can certainly use a personal example. I can make one up. And my personal example is going to um, back up the explanation that I just wrote here, okay? So go ahead, members, write your examples as well. Use first person, and I'll take a look at a few of them, okay? I'll do the same. So. Okay, so here is my example. I recently watched a football match on TV and I decided to turn it off after 10 minutes because there were at least a dozen ads about medication that were distracting. Also, I realized that several athletes were not playing with heart, but simply for a paycheck. Okay, so that's my personal example. Uh, notice again how I'm creating clarity with dozen ads, so 12 ads. Not just any ad, but it was medication, pharmaceutical. I'm not sure about you, but who are pharmaceutical ads taking over the world or what? Anywhere you look, there's some kind of pill that's being advertised. So 
I speak to the knowledge and the emotions of my audience, to the examiner, okay? And I visualize a situation here. I think about my real life. What kind of ads do I see often that annoy me, okay? And then I just match that up with the example. So if I want, I could probably make it even more specific thinking about who was actually playing. So uh, come up with the name of a team, Bayern München or um, any other football team. Or if I choose a basketball team, then name the basketball team. So the more specific, the more visual, the more real your example, the better it will sound, the better it will be for your argument, okay? And I make sure that I also include the example uh, for the second element, which is manipulation of athletes. Now, I'm writing a band nine essay here, so that's why I'm creating multiple points. But if you're looking for a band seven, 7.5, you can easily get that if you write a clear essay with just one point about uh, advertising being distracting. So if you're thinking, hmm, okay, I need a 7.5. I don't, you know, I don't think I can get a nine. I'm not confident in that. Then don't uh, over plan your essay. So in this essay, I'm sure our viewers and members, you can see that, well, that's starting to be a pretty long body paragraph. Um, that's because it's a band nine level and I can definitely produce that very quickly. Okay. Uh, I know I can. So that's why I included two points that is distracting and manipulating. But if you're not sure that you can do that, if you're like, Oh, it's, that's a it's tough in English to do that in 40 minutes. And I agree. I couldn't imagine doing it in Arabic or Mandarin or Cantonese, Punjabi, Hindi. Um, so then I would just choose one. Uh, point for the argument for the negative, not two. Okay. Kamlesh Kumar says, for instance, some youngsters get attracted by irrelevant ads such as expensive sports items, so they get stubborn for the products which may not be useful for them. Okay, Kamlesh, that's really nice writing, so your vocabulary and your grammar is sound, it's clean, but the content is not so accurate to the controlling idea and the topic of the essay. Remember, Kamlesh, that here we're simply saying why people think advertising is negative in sports and that youngsters get attracted by irrelevant items and they get them, which is not useful for much. It's not the most um, impactful argument for why sports advertising is bad. Um, because at the same time, Kamlesh, as a reader, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, yeah, but they become interested in the sport through the products. So there's a positive there too. Okay. So I would go with a more popular answer, like, uh, advertising is distracting for the viewers and takes away from the quality of sports. I think those are more valuable than influencing youngsters to buy certain products. Okay, that's my opinion. I think it's an easier argument to make. Uh, Preeti says, for instance, I watch every cricket match on television, but sometimes get very annoyed because of the flood of advertising, um, which uh, makes me lose interest. Okay, uh, Preeti, it's not bad. Just be more specific. Okay, uh, so tell me a very specific example of a cricket match you watched. Who was the team, and you turned it off because you were annoyed because of the advertising uh, every five minutes. Okay, so a little bit more specific, Preeti. The more specific you can make it, the better the band score. Okay, all right. Okay, students, so uh, now let's go on to body paragraph two um, and let's connect that with a connecting sentence. So here's my connecting sentence.
even though sports advertisement is not entirely beneficial, I do believe that its overall value outweighs these negatives. Okay, so uh, here my connecting sentence right away tells the reader that, okay, uh, I've said these points about the negative, but I do believe that the big picture is such that the positive value of sports advertising is more than the negative. So right away, I weaken the position of body paragraph one, and I connect and lead into the next body paragraph where I can strengthen my position and the side that I believe in. Okay, so let's start with that. So again, topic sentence. The major advantages of corporate sponsorship for athletes and teams is that it encourages millions of people worldwide to excel in sports and provides possibilities for many who would otherwise be unable to uh, participate. Okay, so it's quite a lengthy topic sentence. Again, I'm showing you a band nine level writing here. The major advantages of corporate sponsorship for athletes and teams is that it encourages millions of people worldwide to excel in sports and provides possibilities for many who would otherwise be unable to uh, participate. Uh, indeed, it is the millions of dollars paid to talented and hard working sportsmen and women that adds an extra level of encouragement to become superstars. In addition, many businesses fund impoverished athletics clubs so that they have the necessary equipment and coaching to build teams. Okay, so that is my explanation. Now I go into my example. A well-known 
or let's keep the example first person, all right? My friend, Tim, practiced football every day instead of, eh, maybe I won't overcomplicate. So practice football every day, not only because he loves the sport, but also because he knew that he can earn a living as a valuable player in a professional club. Okay. In addition, he did not have, or his parents did not have much money for football equipment, but because Tim is a very talented player, he always got donations from sponsorship. which allowed him to play and improve. Okay. All right, so uh, that is the full body paragraph two. And I simply wrote that um, because as I'm sure many of you are realizing, we're running out of time in this class and I don't want to rush the conclusion. So instead what I will do is challenge you to write the conclusion for homework, I'll do the same. I'll polish the essay and then I will post it on our community bulletin board with the task two question so everybody can review it. Okay, so check back on the YouTube channel and it will be posted in the next day or two. All right, uh, let's read what we have so far. It's fairly long again, band nine. As you can see, uh, it's possible to write a body paragraph like that in under. Uh, four or five minutes, uh, which means that uh, somebody with a band nine level does not have a problem writing this much in 40 minutes, including uh, the conclusion. Uh, however, if your goal is a band seven, keep it simpler, okay? Take out some of the information, keep it to one instead of two points for each uh, paragraph. So <clears throat> let's go from the top, the introduction. Each year, Companies spend billions of dollars on endorsing sports and athletes. Businesses promote their products and brands by paying money and providing equipment to thousands of athletic clubs and sportsmen, women globally, in hopes of increasing profits. It is important to assess the overall impact this has on the sporting community. Although some individuals believe there are negatives to companies endorsing sports, because it is distracting and manipulating. I agree with those who see this as mostly a benefit since such sponsorship provides incentives and opportunities. Individuals who are against the idea of business endorsing sports may argue that such advertising is not only annoying for fans, but also damaging for athletes. Many people who watch sports on TV state that the dozens of projected banners and logos around football fields are visually distracting from the game. Others also comment that athletes who are paid millions of dollars by advertisers are no longer playing for the fun of the game, but simply out of greed to make more money. I recently watched a football match on TV and I decided to turn it off after 10 minutes because there were at least a dozen ads about medication that were really distracting. Also, I realized that several athletes were not playing with heart, but simply for a paycheck. 
even though sports advertisement is not entirely beneficial, I do believe its overall value outweighs these negatives. The major advantages of corporate sponsorship for athletes and teams is that it encourages millions of people worldwide to excel in sports and provides possibilities for many who would otherwise be unable to participate. Indeed, it is the millions of dollars paid to talented and hardworking sportsmen and women that adds an extra level of encouragement to become superstars. In addition, many businesses fund impoverished athletics clubs so that they have the necessary equipment and coaching to build teams. My friend Tim practiced football every day, not only because he loves the sport, but also because he knew that he can earn a living as a valuable player in a professional club. In addition, his parents did not have much money for football equipment, but because Tim is a very talented player, he always got donations from sponsorship which allowed him to play and improve. In conclusion, and then comes your conclusion. So that is what a band nine essay sounds like. Certainly if I shorten it, take out some of the points, I could still get a band eight, 8.5, as long as the grammar and uh, vocabulary are intact, word choice. And I look forward to your conclusions, members. I'm sorry that we didn't have more time to get into it even further. Uh, nonetheless, I believe that many of you are improving. Again, just remember the structure and focus on that quantitative information, numbers, numbers, okay, students? Uh, check us out, viewers, at aehelp.com and gieltshelp.com for lots of help with the IELTS exam. AE help is for academic students. GIELTS help is for general students. Coming up in 30 minutes, I will host another class for IELTS speaking part three. I hope to see all of you there. Bye for now.